There we go. All right. Now, a lot of you did not get a check mark because you had one side correct, but you were still guessing. You were driving blind on the other side. So, what is the definition of parallel lines? They never, why don't they ever intersect? Why don't they cross? They're the same distance forever. So I want my lines to be parallel. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to rotate this. I make tick marks. Some of you didn't know what tick marks are. If that was you, you should be paying attention. I saw some people who were already doing this. Brooklyn, are you paying attention? Yes. Okay. Terrence, do you need to move? Uh, so, I'm lining my ruler up with the edge of my paper. I need to have it start at the same place each time. Briley, it just didn't seem like you were looking at something interesting. Here is one inch. When you use a ruler, the one inch mark is the big one that's next to the, to the number. Um, this ruler that I'm using, the one inches have kind of, um, they've faded away, so I drew them again. Then the half inch is that big line that's in between the mark with the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little dot by each one inch all the way down my piece of paper. Am I, being, am I letting my ruler move around a whole lot? No. no, I want it to stay in one place so that I don't have to reset it each time. So a lot of you did tick marks at the top of your piece of paper, but if you're just trusting your ruler, then it's possible for your ruler to get all wonky. The way to make sure that it's perfect, and since we're using a tool that allows for perfection, I want you to try to get there. So the way to do that is on the other side of your piece of paper, the bottom, you make tick marks wherever there's a one inch measurement. All the way down the whole thing, so that you don't have to reset your ruler. I made somebody switch me this ruler because it's all, it's all erased, but I can fix it. There we go. All right, so first I have my first set of tick marks. I know they're all an inch apart from each other. Here's an inch, and then I just moved my ruler down to the other side. Here's an inch. On these rulers, both sides are inches. Neither side is, is centimeters. And then, this is important if you use rulers and your lines are still not straight. How am I using, how, how is my hand positioned to hold the ruler? Where are my fingers? They're on the top and the bottom, that's right. If you have been using your ruler like this, then it kind of makes your ruler into a seesaw. And no matter, no matter how good your tick marks are, you still end up with a curved line because your ruler is moving. Um, so you spread your fingers out, connect the two lines, spread your fingers out, and then my fingers are more on the piece of paper on my sketchbook, but they're kind of holding up the ruler so that if I'm drawing my line, my other hand, my pencil, my marker, doesn't knock my ruler off course. So this gets really easy. Uh, remember not to tattoo your paper. I'm not using very much pressure. Why would using a lot of pre pressure on my marker hand be a bad thing to try to keep my ruler in place? Why would using a lot of pressure be a bad thing? Greg. Um, because it will try and counteract the fact that you're trying to push it. Right, um, it kind of counteracts. I'm moving my hand from far away to closer, um, so I can just drag my hand along the ruler. But also, if I'm using a lot of pressure, then I'm pushing against the ruler a lot, and that can knock it off course. And it also um, makes it harder for me to erase my line, right, because I'm tattooing my paper. We've all talked about that before. So here I have a set of parallel lines. Kind of looks like a football field. That's not a grid. What's the definition of perpendicular lines? Yes, Lily. They intersect at 90 degrees. So repeat after me. It is easier, it is easier 
to move my paper than to move my body. So I'm going to make a new set of parallel lines at the top and bottom where I hadn't made parallel lines before. It's easier to rotate your sketchbook than to try to, to draw upside down. That's going to get really awkward. So here's my sketchbook. I'm taking my lines. Am I really concerned with my first group of lines um, at all when I make my tick marks for my second group? Am I making them along any line? No, it doesn't matter because I'm making a new set of lines. And if I'm using the, the straight edges of my sketchbook, then I know that they're going to be perpendicular. Now, why am I making my sets of lines very far away from each other? Yes, Greg. So it'll make a difference. Yeah, so I want you to have the top and the bottom of the line. Say I do another set of lines. Here, I'm going to do this one with red so it's a different color. If, if my lines are not perfect, but I make the lines really far apart from each other, when I connect those lines, so I've got this line back. Oh, it's hard to see. I've got this line down here, and I'm connecting it with my little dot. I did that slightly off course. But you can't really tell, right? This seems like the same distance on the left side as it seems over on the right. Um, if I keep my lines really close together, then do you see how that new red line goes off course really, really quickly? Yeah. So some of you, I saw that you made tick marks on one side, but not on another. And that's what made your lines not not perpendicular. So keep your lines really far away from each other as far as whatever your drawing surface allows. So if I wanted this to be like NASA level specific, right, where if I was going into space based on whether or not my lines were perpendicular, I would try to make my two lines that I'm connecting as far apart from each other as possible. But we don't really need that level of specific in here. So just put them on opposite sides of your piece of paper. All right. So this is a perfect one inch grid, right? You keep your tick marks, you line up your tick marks on the top of your paper, on the bottom of your paper, and then you connect your lines. And then you rotate. Is it easier to rotate your paper or your body? Your paper. Then you rotate your, bo or your paper in the other direction so you can do the other set of perpendicular lines. OK, when is the new due date for your panels? Thursday.